been a real pleasure for me as the executive director of the committee, Pat Carlson, to work with the folks from the library where the former Sunday lecture series had been held to reestablish that. I think that it, it goes well for continuing discussions with them about other kinds of projects related to the history and engaging the community in, in both of our organizations. Alan Calavano, I didn't have much of a chance to get to know him. I started the job there in January. But I thought to myself that there's a man who has opinions, and there's a man who will, in fact, talk back to me and help me solve problems, not with just saying yes, man, but say, are you sure? Are you out of your mind? Um, and so I'm really proud that we're able to take the memorials that we received in his name and offer some interesting programs about the history and the nature of the city of Rochester and Homestead County. And now I'd like to introduce Gary Satterfield, who is Satterfield. I just <laughs> I just threw one of those senior citizen flags here, Gary. Here's Gary to introduce our speaker today. Satterfield.
met with uh, Brene, they got a thing to do, uh, became part of this event. So I designed the crosswalk, and Thursday we, I sketched everything out. We got a lot of volunteers to come out and paint these uh, crosswalks as part of the event. And the, it's, it's, it's a lot of community involvement. So that's kind of fun. People, people really like that. I, there's a lot more people turned out than I ever thought. We did this all in like, I mean, we got there at 8 o'clock in the morning. They blocked the streets off at 9. So between 9 and 3, we painted four crosswalks. So I sketched as fast as I possibly could. <laughs> Drew things, measured things. All the other people just, you know, came out. And it was quite, uh, I have to say that we had a lot of plenty of time. So let's see. Oh, I just want to say too that another thing is that painting on painting on murals on walls, of course, is, is my favorite work. And I feel very fortunate that I've had this the opportunities in Rochester for doing this as I have. It's been a it's work I love to do, and and it's just been a I am grateful for that fact. So uh, the. There is a challenge in this work. I just want to see some of the different, I want to show some of the different things that are in different places, other cities that have done these things uh, in the past. And, and it can, wall murals can be a lot of different ideas. I usually mine are a bit more realistic or something. But uh, I like to think that there's, but you can do almost anything. Almost. But here's another example of how you can, just fun uh, color, it's a, it's a design as well, and of course you can see it's a, I've been on those things as well. So for me the challenge in the work is to view the space and the building. I think you can see some of that here, I think you, when you see the triangles that are in this window and the scattered pieces around it, I think they, someone has considered the design of this mural and how it fits into space itself, which is something I like to think about a lot. I look at the building's angles, the colors, and, and view, decide how design might work in that space. Now, not that everybody would work that way, but uh, and it's not always necessary, but I, I do do that. I think this is another good example where you have these round uh, silos, and something that's created uh, quite, quite a fun mm -hmm. thing. And I like this one, too, because it's just it's just a lot of abstract uh, triangle shapes and a little bit of three dimension, and it's just a play of warm and cool colors. And it looks like they're working with a spray can, and I can't, I can't figure out how they're doing that, but uh, I found that one a little bit interesting. Just for people also, sometimes they, this is a mural, a graffiti wall that they decided like to let people paint graffiti here, It'll be painted over probably, and then somebody else comes by. I read somewhere that there's a, I can't remember which city in the south, some place, but they have like an enclosed area, and every year some, they have artists paint murals, and then they, next year they just paint over them, and they do new ones. So it's not always that you, you paint something and it's going to stay there forever. Which, uh, so anyway, oh, here's this is another street art, I think people have things, it shows you how you can look at stuff and you can see. Uh, there's actually quite a few of these clever little things done. Uh, there's all three-dimensional uh, uh, murals that fool the eye a little bit. I'm, I always get a kick out of how this works, but it depends on the camera and your viewing angle a lot. But mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of thought figuring out how you can do this without making it look all messed up. Going to be viewed from this angle, but you view it all over. So someone put a lot of thought into that somehow. Uh, and this I thought was quite clever too, uh, for underneath the brick. So you can, I just wanted to show a lot of different applications of this. And it's pretty simple, but it's colorful. And probably one of the nice things about it is that you can graffiti it very easily. Uh, and that being said, I have to say that very few of any if anything that I've ever done that has had graffiti on it. And there are ways to protect, but a few of you should uh, 
older buildings that they had walled the paint out. I found that uh, Los Angeles, or uh, Los Angeles has, uh, it's almost a mural capital, and I think it's due to their climate. I'm not quite sure how many they have, but it's a lot. Uh, and then I found that Vancouver has quite, quite a good program as well. So uh, we could start with some. Um, Go back to the original title here at this point, Rochester Downtown Murals. And I'd like to mention, I was, I'm talking about mostly about public art in public spaces, but I've done a lot of wall murals for businesses in town. And uh, so we could begin with um, probably the first, first one that's ever been done. I was, did this in 1999, and I remember meeting with, I think that the Greg, uh, uh, but he went, I think he spent some time out in Washington, or Oregon, and he saw a lot of wall murals, then he came back, and I think he had this idea that he wanted to uh, do a wall mural, and I, I, I was working at an ad agency at the time, and I kept thinking more commercially, like uh, he wants to put his name on there, and he wants to do, you know, it's going to be like a promotion, and as I talked to him, I gradually got the message that no, he just, he wanted to just do art. And so that was kind of cool. He handed me a little radio printed out this big uh, from the internet that was all beige. And I kept thinking, like, well, okay, beige, brown, you know, how is this, how am I supposed to make this interest? And for some, uh, it had browns, and I kept thinking at some of the design thing, well, how do I make browns interesting? What's going to do, and I, this is how this process works. So I was looking at a Land's End catalog cover, and it had, on the front of the cover, it had a mural that was done in Hawaii, and it had all these nice warm peach, uh, somewhat purple and browns and green warm tones, and that's why I had the idea of doing the peach background and, and, and the, the warm tones in there, which made the radio still brown, but it, but it made it a lot more interesting. Uh, the other, uh, this is a kismet, I'm sure most everybody's seen the kismet, and that I think shows this part of it. We started off, this is, there's a lot of interesting stories behind this, but you know, that was a pretty ugly sort of nothing building with turquoise and you know, some backlit sign on it. She, the painting's a very interesting person, and she wanted to do something different. So we painted the doorway at first. And then she painted this. Well, this is a good example of how this image has actually worked for her business. For she's used that on her cards. She's used. They call her Chloe. We use it in different advertising, and she's used it as an adver as an advertising image for quite a long time. And I will say, for instance, like this space itself. So I'm seeing over the years. I see some fading on some of these colors, but they they hold up pretty well. Wondering how that works. So there's some other early. This is the other side of it. That we did actually. I. So this is a little something different, but I helped her. This, this piece, this piece, these pieces were all designed and put on the building just to dress it up a little bit. And I think her face actually has fallen off. I think, but but we, I tried to create some architectural elements that might help with the rest of it. This is another early one that I did with the, with the Boys and Girls Club. So I met with Kit, and we, it was supposed to be a fire mural because there's fire extinguisher equipment in the building. And, and I really, when we did this, I thought, I used to live close by that house. Or my house was close by this. And I thought, it's such a unique little building. What a great place for a wall mural. You know, it's in a very neighborhood-ish. And so we uh, we met, we talked about fire things, and then I just incorporated them into the into the mural. So like this is right here is a boarded up window, essentially. So I use those spaces, like this is a boarded up window, there's a door back there. So I try to use those within the that's just a nice way to disguise things. So that was a neighborhood mural. We had people come out and paint. Uh, 
I love you did. It's one of those things just like Thursday, although well, Thursday wasn't the longest. I remember and by the end of the day, I was like kind of tired. I mean, I never stopped moving because everyone wanted to know what they could do. But it's a lot of fun. It's just, everyone got to paint a little something, and then I go back over where I don't, where I don't like things, and I paint where it, it doesn't turn out quite as well. This is, I think this one is still in building uh, downtown, but done my sister's historic building. Um, I think there's a sushi place and a few other things in there now, but when she had the art gallery in there, she, we had a picture of the front of the building, this is history now, uh, and that was a bakery at one time. Uh, so we, we used the front of the old face of the building and just, you know, created the rest of it. So it was like, I thought it was a nice way to tie it in. This is the, I just think, I'd like to mention this because it's just an unusual thing. I did some things with me, but when the Civic Center expanded, we have to count back on how many times they expanded, but uh, they had money, when, when public money is used for that kind of expansion, a certain portion of it was supposed to go towards art. And so, they put out this call for artists to design a wayfinding system. So this is the, I designed this sign, how it should look, and then people don't really know about you things like all these little pieces in the side were done, and they light up, and it was kind of, I also was kind of, it's a very nice looking sign, I was sort of proud of it because signs really are most of the time not very nice looking. And I think whenever you can create a sign that, that is, that can be a, this is a sign and possibly something more like a piece of artwork or a sculpture or something. Um, I also do things for, I've done things for churches and schools. This is Resurrection Lutheran School. Uh, this is an example where, you know, the building was built and it was, they had the idea of putting murals in, in the entryway. So, of course, that was. There was drywall put on the wall, which allowed me to make the curve at the top. And, and then, like, there's a, uh, these are little secrets here, but there's, a, there's some sort of uh, plumbing or something, call-off, as they call it. This rock can be removed if you don't get behind it. So I can move there. But, so I had about three days left of school, and I thought, what am I going to put on this wall? I went inside the classroom and I shot a few pictures. And then it was kind of interesting because, you know, people sitting in a classroom at a desk, eh, you know, not very interesting. But there was a teacher outside the class. The kids were lined up in a hallway. And she was explaining these posters that were done, long posters that Mayo did for the Mayo Brothers. And they were standing in the hallway like this and sitting down. So that gave me the idea <coughs> of the river you know, the te Jesus teaching, the kids listening, or the sign was there, everything was right there. And sometimes that's all you need just to get going. You got, okay, wow, I got this thing here now. And so this is sort of the spiritual side of learning, and that side is supposed to be more of the, uh, more of the earthly things, like she's doing piece of artwork, or cleaning, or helping, or playing sports. So that's the concept behind that one. I've also done something for St. Francis Church, and so you can see, this is all painted. These, again, I'm going to talk about this, but the architectural elements are painted in. I, help, I think it helps blend into the whole piece. This piece, I have them just, they wanted sort of a fresco. So this is what I would call a fresco look, because real fresco is very difficult to do. <clears throat> but I did use casein paint, which are, Anybody know what casein paints are? I don't think anybody knows what they are anymore, but people do use them. They were, uh, they're made from casein of milk protein. They were the first water, some of the first water-based paints uh, after oil, you know, about maybe 20, 30 years ago. They're very flat and thin. They don't, they don't work very well on canvases because they can crack. Uh, but they're actually very permanent. They, they last a long time. They use them 
my column that I had to order a powdered form aerobic film from Pennsylvania, and I found out that they <coughs> use it a lot in furniture painting. They when you're painting furniture because of the flatness of it, and it sinks into the wood and cause has a you know just a nice sheen to it. So I had them set up the drywall or the compound in no primer and just paint it right into the wood. So it kind of resembled a fresh film. This is hand green, I painted her awning. It doesn't look this good anymore. It's a little bit dirtier. But it was a fun thing to do. I just gathered up a lot, a lot of things from her, her store. And it was just, just warm. She had the idea that there were a lot of people across the street in the hotel who could get the attention. You know, because they might look around. Oh, that's interesting. So, and then there's these are the defunct mural list that I'm going to show you. Uh, Rochester Produce, I also thought that was another good one. I like it. It's a fun surface to paint on. Stucco is fun to work with. It, this stucco was a little bit deep, so we had, took a while when it was going over the paint. And I also thought that was, when it was there at the store, that it was a nice concept, but it was, it's a windowless building, and it's quite uninteresting. So you can you know, by painting a mural on it, you know, you get the attention. Um, okay, more history here because this is another defunct mural was at the hangar bar and grill at the airport. And we didn't hear it, but this is a scene from Rochester's, one of Rochester's airports. I took directly when probably fifth that was before it was added on. And See the boarding from the tarmac, which is that probably 50 years ago. And, and I would like these, I thought they came out nice, but they're, they're kind of This is the other one, Rochester's first airport. So they were, they were kind of fun. That was a south, I believe it was southeast for anybody who's been in Rochester a long time. Uh, but it was, they were neat things, I always liked them and felt bad that they got painted over. Uh, Magoon, this will probably disappear as well because my Google that we get been sold. Uh, I always thought that building, speaking of history, that bank building would be really nice. I don't know if anybody ever did something nice and restored that building. There's you know, some really nice things at the top of it. Um, so hopefully someone will take care of it. But also the Boone Taxi Company was uh, that was all that's historical too as well. So then there's the Rochester Athletic Club. Has anyone here been to the Rochester Athletic Club? Well, there's a giant room in there, and this is part of it. I got, I got, got two. And this is when I was, you can see I was up there using huge equipment. Uh, they turned like a four or five tennis court room into something called The Neighborhood, and they wanted to paint walls. And so I was in there, I think, six months. And I had a helper for about 12 weeks. It was a huge thing. It was like a really a lot of fun. So we would go in there about 4 or 5 o'clock at night. I had this helper and I, after the construction crews left, and I had to run all the equipment. And the only way you could get up and over to paint back behind those, because these things came out of the wall, what they did is they built them fake buildings coming out of the wall, but in the other side of the wall, there were offices. So it was kind of you know, a nice way to make you paint. I, I painted the skies. I had a spray painter with a wand on it, and I would just go like this mm. to get the clouds and everything. But I have, I have pictures in this book. I don't have a lot of this. Another, uh, this is in Dooley. I just like to show you how I kind of have these precarious little things, uh, ladders on the stairways. Like that. So it's good to have a good sense of balance uh, and don't, I never <laughs> lose track of that. I'm all holding on to something. You know, but it's tricky to get around to do it you know, when you have to do stuff like that. Also, another tricky one. So if you go in the downtown, in the shops down there, you, this, I, this is the last time I painted the ceiling down there. So the exam for the Minnesota. Uh, university is not, it's too big to put vinyl, so they had to paint it. 
to the, I painted the M. I painted them the first time, they were different. There's a yellow ceiling, if anybody remembers that one. And uh, the M's were, were different. They're on this, they're on opposite sides. So I remember I made them, I did them really big, and I started drawing them out. And one went over one of the sprinklers, and I thought, oh, this is going to really not like this. So I went home and changed the size of everything. So it was, so the little seraph on the end of it would not go over a sprinkler. Second back, so they have a platform, and then there is, you know, where the escalator is. They had to have this above the escalator so you could get down the escalator. So I had this space between here and here to work to, you know, and that's like this much space. <laughs> so I was trying like, okay, I don't, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this because it's just too hard to do this. So I went home and. I found two things that I almost threw off that year. And one was a mechanic's creeper, and the other was a beach chair. Mm -hmm. And I duct taped the beach chair to the mechanic's creeper, and I was able to just sit back and go like this, you know. <laughs> so you have one of those moments where you go like, well, I should throw this stuff out, and then you don't, and it turns out pretty good. Um, and this is shade of green, I think. I was, it's all these situations. So Shade the Green, that was another shop, another store that I think was on Second Street for a long time. And you drive by and go, hmm, Shade the Green, what is that? And I don't think anybody ever really got it for years. And so he won Paint the Mural, and I thought, well, that's good. You can show what's on the what's on the inside on the outside. And your last name is Green. So people would think, well, is this an Irish shop or something? <coughs> and it's just that her last name is, is Green. And so uh, uh, that one, this side turned out, I like this side better than the other side. I did paint both sides. And this is the CJ, which actually is kind of interesting that it stayed up as long as it has because it was not supposed to be around very long. So it's one, it's one of my favorites, and I think most people in town seem to. Like did. I went to one event where they got a cooler board or something that was fitting. You know, the Committee uh, on Urban Design and Environment put out awards for certain things. And one woman just said, well, it just makes me smile. So that's a nice compliment to get. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is when I talk about how things fit into the city. So I, I like this Dean Rivet shot this photo, and I always liked it because it just shows it at the bottom, and I, I just like the way it fits into the, the whole cityscape. It shows you how this adds that little touch of color on the bottom. So I had people who, I had a guy come to me at Irish Fest, and he wanted like a print of that, so he was, he was a jazz musician, and it's like, well, can you shoot a photo? I think you can get out of the building across the street and you should have really good photo thing. Isn't that on the cover of one of the bone books now? I don't know. Is it? Who knows if anyone got a bone book? Well, that yeah. bone book that has a spiral. It, it, it might, yeah. It like, might, yeah. Yeah, I think it's on the cover of the bone book. So it, it, if it, if it disappears, it disappears. You know, I mean, it's like <coughs> it was there for a while and people enjoy it. And that's part of it. This is Blue Sky Depot. I don't know if anyone's seen this one. Yeah, so it, it, you, the only way you can see this is a destination mural. So the only way you can see it is if you, you go across the street from uh, the Half Barrel or Dooley's, you go up on the, uh, part, or the Skyway level, and you look across what used to be Bilotti right there. And I didn't have the title yet when I shot these, so I never got back. But it's nice, and they used a lot of blues and yellow. And they like this at night. So it's really, to go up there at night, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's dental. If you don't notice, there's kind of paintbrushes here. Uh, there's a tooth on top of that. He's brushing his teeth. This guy is actually flossing his teeth, and this is the floss. And so there's, there's some concepts in there. And then there's a dog over there catching a frisbee. So I did all these sky things. Here, sky things. But I, I kind of like. For some reason, I like the idea of the blue and the yellow. You know? um, and, and Northgate. Well, Northgate, you know, 
know, I drove past that so many times that wall, and I just wanted to just like, man, that is a place for neuroscience. You know, and it's just that whole area. And this is one of the things I always notice is that I just, you know, you're trying to drive and you go, you know, got buildings here. This is not a very nice area. The railroad tracks are bad there. And it just doesn't give you a good feeling. But when I try to paint it, it just brightens the whole area up. I had shop owners come down a way to say thank you almost because they they just it does it this does work that way. I mean this uh, story about sometimes like a, you have a neighborhood that's not as a bit crummy or something and it's uh, you know it'll it'll help the neighborhood, it'll help the area of the space. Uh, when I was, I painted the wall in the alley by the tap house. And before that, when, when Jasper's was, business was there, I think I, what did I say? I think I painted the wall here. I can't even remember how to put it. But I remember standing in the alley. And I, I look over here, it's a nice brick. You look across, historic third, and everything looks good. And then right next to it was Jasper's, that wall was just sort of cracked. You know, it's dirty, it was, and you just see, now it's painted, and it looks so much nicer, it looks so much better. It was the only thing in that area that didn't look nice. And we can do a few things. This is kind of an interesting example of what you can, how you can solve problems. So this is the, in the Boys and Girls Club, a male sponsored this girl. And they said, oh, we got this wall you finished. So I go there and I look at it, and I see that we'll take a laser on it somewhere. Oh, there you go. So there's like four windows, and I go like four windows. You know, how do you I put a, a mirror on a wall of four windows? So I saw kids and young people and male guys standing up on top. So I decided what I would do is carry just something up over the top and do something on the other wall as to make it more around you. And I like, the stars are like the, like a curtain. So the children are down below helping each other climb up and over, and then they're like being, coming up on a stage, I think the world stage, and the curtain's opening your party. So I just applied some nice things. By using the curtain, it helped me bring the element off the other side of the room. And it just made it more interesting than trying to figure out what you can only do there. So I think they like that. There's a little mural I did with Pinewood Elementary School on nutrition. And I had kids help me on this one. It was all fun. Biking, I think. So they come they want to they want to help paint. So they think they brought their worst clothes to school. And they're like, but they're all dressed in these nice clothes and it's just like hoping they don't get this is a nutrition girl that's in Wick. She did something out there. And she's like fruits and vegetables and an active activity. So exercise and activity. This is in Stewartville Library. So we're venturing out of Rochester a little bit, but, but then it just was a nice way to solve again, uh, solve the problem that we have this thing that runs around the room. So just some pages and some, I thought it would be nice to have a book up there. And, and then I thought, you know, how I would think, I thought that trees and reading in the trees was sort of a cozy feel you get maybe when you're, back when you used to read books. Um, now, more things for school. This is in the Albert Lee. I just showed you, like, what you can do. These are, they, as you notice, that wall, you can't paint on that wall. We did four four by eight sheets. I cut them in different uh, angles. When I meet with kids, I talk to them and get and they get the input. And then I go do something, and come back and show them. And they got the paint on it. And then there's some cool things like this puppy. I don't know, do this here. So this is technology man. So they there's like twelve little squares in there. So the kids could paint the twelve little squares, and all I had to do was glue them on there. So they got to do their own thing, and it doesn't, it works within the concept of the whole thing. So I learned something on that one. There's uh, when we're trying to paint. And sometimes I do 
kids grow just as a kind of like from the energy. That whole thing. Or something like that. Fun. Um, and this is uh, one I just did this year at Madonna Towers. It's got focus pieces because I can't choose to pick one picture of this whole thing. But it's really nice. It's in there. Uh, Curious unit that's on the north side. And there, it, there's a hallway, and then it opens up into a, a common space, and outside of that is a, you know, a patio or outdoor space. So I thought it was nice to reflect that space. Um, and little things like, so the rail goes across, and I think, well, um, mostly I'll just carry this up and around. Uh, I have one thing that actually goes from here up through it. I tried to create some foreground and background. And then I put all these garden things below. And because I think people would be in wheelchairs, you know, they're kind of, they're doing things down here. And, but it's essentially it's a gardening thing. So, uh, and then we have two older people talking. And the person on the swing represents youth. And it's a little something I did for a realtor, um, Meyer Realty. He just, you know, people will, he's got a conference room and he just likes art. I've got a couple things for him. And he pitches in the boundary waters or up there somewhere. And I just, so this is all, this is in the, uh, if you know uh, about who nuts trucks, this is, I've done some things for them. This is one of his sons is married to a Scottish lady. So we did a Scottish castle on the wall. And there's some thorny looking thing. Uh, this, um, so I just want to show you that our outside town. This is Walnut Grove, Minnesota. And it's kind of an interesting story there because this building, there are a lot of monk people settled in that area. And Bob and Working Marshall were. Uh, Schwan, who we start, and I did a mural on Marshall, and then they saw it. And there, so this building was bought by one people, and they put a grocery store in there. And you know, it, so there was a mural <coughs> on here. It was spray painted, possibly in the 70s or 80s, and it was in pretty tough shape. It didn't look very good, and they wanted to do something that incorporated the monk culture and or a little wild. So we did uh, a large figure for Laura who was wild when she was older and then a, a Hmong lady in traditional costume. And actually had somebody help me on this one. But it was, uh, it's, you learn a lot. It's fun to go out and do these things. Like I, uh, it's really a small town and it's not much there, but this grocery store is there. And because of these people, and I have somebody who can say that Oh yeah, they stayed in the school system because they stayed there and they got families and they all, and so that's uh, kind of interesting to find out. This one I have to show you because it's in Huron, South Dakota, and it's big. So that's 44 feet high to the top of the building. That was, I did this in two months on a giant lift, and there's a lot of detail in it. So again, you know, conceptually, most of the details in the bottom because you know you don't see way up there. So it was just things uh, that were they have the state fair in this town. So the South Dakota State Fair is in this town. So it was a, a, a very fun project. And this is for my brother in law in Denver. He wrote he made to make um, to make install and service parking lot equipment. <laughs> Mountain parking. So I started this thing into people. I put an old sod in there because I tried to have driven sods and I thought it'd be fun. Like someday somebody will say, Why is that car in there? You know? <laughs> this is a really nice piece, but it's impossible to get 
installed everywhere, and after about four or five weeks, there's like big changes. And like there's, uh, there's a lot of activity, so I would work from about maybe eight, nine in the morning until one or two. I'd take off for lunch for a while, come back, and then it was nice when they all left, though. So, and I turn on some mellow. They used to have about three radios going, so I would just turn on some mellow music. And this is a recent piece that I just did for Leroy, Minnesota. And it's very, very nice. Uh, the bishop's coming down in a few weeks. Uh, but they redid the sanctuary. They added onto the church. I think they got a donation. And we built a curved wall, but I designed the entire thing. The wood, how the wood should look, everything in the shape. So I painted four, four murals, and then this at the top. I did the two side thing, and they had, it's a curved wall, so the, the woodworkers came in and did all the woodwork, and they had to curve it, and they had to paint gold around it, it's quite neat. Uh, I don't, you know, shops like that don't come around very often, and the most coolest thing for me was that uh, I just came up with ideas and they liked it. So really, uh, and it's like, where would you start on something like this? You know, where do you where do you begin? Somehow I drove away and I just thought in my head, I thought, well, Jesus teaches, Jesus speaks, Jesus forgives, and Jesus loves, and just did, you know, same old. Uh, so that's how, I don't know, sometimes you just have ideas. You know, I, sometimes, and I think that's it. So if you have a question, if anything you want to ask, I had one. I had one sort of a final thought. I had a final thought, and you know, I, when we do this stuff, I was thinking how how there's so much is done. Like in Huron, they had a whole program. They had a lot of old buildings, not a lot of exciting things going on in town. They wanted to attract people, so they were paying like one euro a year for a while, and. And I think about how long this stuff is done on older buildings, and I wonder about new buildings, new architecture. And I know like a lot of new buildings or architecture may incorporate quote unquote installation sculpture and things like that. But I wonder, like for instance, on, on the outside of the building, if you could design the building so that there'd be a place to actually have a mural, or even a place you could change a mural. Just I was looking at my house here tonight, and you know, the landscaping looks okay, but that great big yellow white garage door looks like it needs something. And you know, I was thinking in Baltimore, they change the industry in some of the townhomes in some of those neighborhoods, and they have a, you know, a window screen painting association for society. But I'm thinking, you know, looking at some of the, maybe garage doors, I've been yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, people do do that stuff, and it's, it's, you know, so it's not a showcase, but it's for personal satisfaction, you know. I've done a lot of things for people's homes, and I think I've added some stuff, you know, to it. It all, it, you gauge it by the fact that if you go back in a few years, it's just been painted over, you know, for now. Mm -hmm. So if it's good, they don't paint over it. If it looks good in the area, or so I try to create things that I think people are lacking. Years ago, I, I got comments uh, from like CRC radio. People said, oh, I just love that radio. And I thought about that, and I thought, well, they didn't say I like that or something. And people say, oh, I love that radio. That's a, that's a pretty nice, that's a good comment, you know. And it's nice that people feel that way uh, about, you know, a lot of the work. So you get some feedback. When I'm on the street, when I am painting, I do get feedback. Uh, when I was in Marshall painting, I had one, I didn't put that one in there, but it was a music mural, and I had some country western slash folk singing people. And somebody was playing, some, I had a fiddler playing the harmonica, and some young guy walked by one night and he said, I like, oh, that's me. Like, you know, they, people see things in there. I had someone contact me not that long ago, they were shooting a, they're young people shooting an independent movie or something. They want to know if they could use it as a backdrop. I find a lot of, a lot of more open stuff, you know. Yeah. 
you know, there's, I've seen people take wedding photos in front of them. You know, so this can be kind of cool, but for depending on where they are. Um, but that's pretty much it. Do yeah, you have any questions? Do you want to talk about anything?
offer very amazing, amazing. Your talent is truly amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank um, thank you. One, one, every time of these pictures, when I saw them, I was like, wow. I have a question, sir. Um, let's say if somebody says, you know, do something over here.